we're going to look at the fundamental theorem of algebra. Our fundamental theorem of algebra tells us that a polynomial of nth degree has n zeros. So if we have this example down here, 7x plus 3x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 5, if we want to know how many zeros we're going to be looking for, we first need to find our degree. And now remember, our degree is our biggest exponent, so in this case, our degree would be 4. So that tells us we're going to have four zeros. This theorem lets us know how many answers we need to find. One thing to remember is that complex zeros always occur as complex conjugate pairs. And that's because of our plus minus, but they are always in pairs. Um, if you think of the quadratic formula, we have that plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's why they will always be in pairs. Now, when we are actually asked to find the zeros, you can use any method of factoring that we have learned. So basically, anything that's in your flip book, you can use. So here's our first practice. Find all the zeros of x cubed plus x squared minus x plus 15. Now, before I even get started, I want to find my degree, which is the 3. So I know that when I'm done, I had better have three different answers. Now, this is a four-term polynomial, so you would want to go to your four or more term column in your flipbook and decide which method you would like to try. Um, I'm going to try grouping first, just because I like grouping. So I'm going to put these first two together, because I can pull an x squared out, and I'm going to put my last two together. Well, when I pull an x squared out of these first two, I'm going to be left with x plus 1, and I can only pull out a negative 1, and we'll be left with x minus 15. Notice I didn't get the same thing here, so that didn't work for me. Um, I'm going to try the rational zero theorem then, which says I need to take my factors of 15. So all my factors of 15 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 5, and plus or minus 15. And I need to put them over the factors of my leading coefficient, which in this case is 1. So I'll have all of these over 1. That means any rational 0 I have is either going to be positive negative 1, positive negative 3, positive negative 5, or positive and negative 15. Then you just get to start guessing and checking. Um, I'm going to start with negative 1. Now remember, when you're doing the rational 0 theorem, you can use synthetic division in order to check your answer. Make sure you watch out for any zeros that might need to be filled in. But here we don't have any, and I'm going to try negative 1. So as I perform the synthetic um, division here, hopefully we're going to get a 0 at the end, and we didn't. So I know that it's not negative 1. Well, I'm going to go ahead and change that to a positive 1. I'm just going to write right over top of it. And still didn't work out for me. Okay, so I know it's not negative or positive 1. Um, I'm going to try negative 3 again. So set up your synthetic division, put your negative 3 out in front, and see if you can get that one to work. Ah, and it looks like we do have one. Since we got a 0 for our remainder, we have found one of our zeros. Now remember, we do the synthetic division because this gives us a simpler equation to work with. I'm going to have 1x squared, because remember you drop your degree once, minus 2x plus 5. Now that I have an x squared term, I'm going to go ahead and use the quadratic formula right away. And that tells me that x is equal to the opposite of b, so I'm going to have positive 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared, well, negative 2 squared is 4, minus 4 times a times c. Well, 4 times 1 times 5 is 20. All divided by 2a, and 2 times 1 is the 2. Simplify that down a little bit, and we are going to have 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 16 all over 2. Now notice here, I got a negative, which means I'm going to have some imaginary answers. So I'm going to end up with 2 plus or minus. Now to take care of that negative, I pull the i, 
put the i in front, and that pulls that negative out. And then the square root of 16 is also just 4. So that actually simplifies down to plus or minus 4i. And then to write it in standard form, I need to split them up. So they each get their own denominator of 2. Then I'm going to reduce. So 2 over 2 is 1. 4 over 2 would reduce to 2i. Okay, now before we started, I said we needed three zeros because our degree was 3. Well, I've got negative 3 right over here. And remember, this right here is two answers. It's 1 plus 2i, and it's 1 minus 2i. So we have all three of our answers. We're done with this one. Okay, here's another practice one. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find all the zeros of this one. All right, this one might have been a little bit tricky for you at first. I ruled out grouping because I had an odd number of terms. So I went ahead and listed my possible rational zeros up here, and I started guessing and checking. One thing you had to realize was that you had to fill in a zero for that placeholder of the x cubed term. Because there was no x cubed here, you have to have that zero for a placeholder. I put one on the outside for my first guess, did the synthetic division, and found out that it worked. So I rewrote my new simpler equation here and checked to see if I could do grouping, but I couldn't because, again, there was an odd number of terms. So I went back to using the synthetic division. I wrote my coefficients down. I didn't have to fill in any zeros this time. Then I guessed negative 2 on the outside here. Did my synthetic division, and negative 2 worked out for me. So right now I'm at two zeros. I've got a 1, and I've got a negative 2 that worked. With my new equation, I tried grouping first, and it didn't work, so I went back to my rational zero theorem. And what ended up happening was that 1 worked again. When I did the synthetic division by 1 for a second time, it worked again. And that gave me my simpler equation here, this x squared minus 2x plus 3. From there, I decided to use the quadratic formula because I was down to an x squared, a quadratic. So I plugged that in, and I ended up with 2 over 2 plus or minus i square roots of 8 over 2. Well, I reduced the 2 over 2 to 1, and then the square root of 8 reduced down to the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, and then the square root of 4 is just a regular 2. Then I reduced those two regular 2's, and I was just left with 1 plus or minus i square roots of 2. Now remember, this is two answers. Here was our third answer, here is our fourth answer, and here is our fifth answer, which matches our degree of 5. So one thing you might not have known was that you can have repeat zeros. We've had them when we've been doing other algebraic um, problems. We've had doubled up zeros, but now even with synthetic division you have to realize that sometimes you might have to try the same number twice. What happens on a graph when you have a double zero? Well we'll have a zero down here at negative two, so our graph is going to go through there, and then over here at positive one your graph is going to come touch the axis and then bounce back up. That's actually how you get a double zero, is when it just touches the axis and then turns back around. Practice 3 says write a polynomial of least degree in real coefficients that has zeros of 2, negative 3, and 2 plus 4i. What you need to do is you need to think back to how do we go from zeros to polynomials. Well, recall that zeros can be turned into factors. And we can multiply factors to get our polynomial. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the 0, x equals 2. Now remember, our factors are always set equal to 0. So I've got to get my x equals 2. I have to have it set equal to 0. In order to do that, I need to subtract 2 from both sides. So I would end up with a factor of x minus 2. Then I'm going to go to my negative 3. Well, in order to get it set equal to 0, I have to add 3 to both sides. And so I would get x plus 3 as another factor the 2 plus 4i. You're going to do the same process. I'm going to minus 2 from both sides. I'm going to minus 4i from both sides. 
and I'm going to end up with x minus 2 minus 4i. Now remember on that first slide what it said about complex zeros. They always occur in its complex conjugates. So by having 2 plus 4i, I automatically know that 2 minus 4i is another zero because they have to have a partner. So I have to do that last zero. x equals 2 minus 4i. I'm going to subtract the 2 over, I'm going to add the 4i over, and that gives me a factor of x minus 2 plus 4i. Now when you're multiplying and you have complex numbers, you always want to partner those two together. So I'm going to multiply the last two together and the first two together. Now the first two I can just FOIL out, and I'll end up with x squared plus x minus 6. And these last two, I can't FOIL because they have three terms, but I can go ahead and kind of distribute that all out. So I'm going to start with this x up front and distribute it to each one of these in the back. So I'm going to end up with x squared minus 2x plus 4ix. Then I'm going to do the negative 2 and I'm going to distribute it to everything. So I'm going to have negative 2x plus 4 minus 8i, and then the negative 4i. I would get negative 4ix plus 8i minus 16i squared. Don't forget that i times i is i squared. I'm going to go through and simplify this last one out because it's really long, and when I do that, I have to leave my x squared. There's nothing to combine it with the minus 2x and the minus 2x, those can combine to be minus 4x, the plus 4ix and the minus 4ix, those two cancel each other out, um, the minus 8i and the plus 8i, those two cancel each other out. Then you have to remember that i squared is really equal to negative 1, so I'm going to replace i squared with negative 1, and then negative 16 times negative 1 turns into a positive 16. So I actually end up with positive 4 plus 16, which gives me a positive 20. So that big mess that we had here simplifies all the way down to x squared minus 4x plus 20. Now don't forget about that first one that I foiled out, because we still have to multiply these two together to get our actual polynomial. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute the x squared to each one of these in the back. And I'm going to end up with x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus 20x squared. Then I'm going to move to the plus x here. So I would have plus x cubed minus 4x squared plus 20x. And then to the minus 6. So negative 6x squared plus 24x minus 120. Last thing I need to do is combine any like terms that I have. So I've got x to the fourth, and I've got negative 4x cubed plus 1x cubed, so I'm going to have negative 3x cubed. My 20x squared minus 4x squared, minus 6x squared, those all go together, so I'd be left with plus 10x squared. And then my 20x plus my 24x would be plus 44x. And my minus 120 doesn't have anything to go with, so it just gets to stay minus 120. And now when I put my y equals to that, I have my polynomial of least degree that has those zeros given to me.